Hello everyone. Welcome to our AccuDesign webinar. I'm Nancy Fiedler. And I'm Mary Carollo. And we are so excited to be able to share with you all of the fun things we've discovered we can do with Genomi's new app, the AccuDesign. This app works with the iPad and the iPhone. And Mary, what is, makes this app so powerful? Well, it is a very powerful app because it allows you to edit existing designs and quite substantial editing actually. And you can save it and export it to all file formats. So it is a program or an app. It's hard to, it's hard to say, not say program because it is an app. Um, and for multi-formatted people. So it doesn't matter what machine you have, this is going to be a perfect app for you to use. And of course, it's portable. Wonderful. And keep in mind that once you have worked with your design and you're ready to embroider it, you can export it to a USB jump drive to uh, load it into your embroidery machine. You're going to show us how to do all of that, right? Yes, of course. That's why we're here, to learn all of the secrets. Once you've installed your app onto your iPad or iPhone and opened it up, you're going to get a screen that looks very similar to this. And I want to take the first portion of our webinar to kind of go through some of the um, icons and tools to fill, so that you get familiar with the look of the app. And then Mary's actually going to work through um, some of the uh, techniques that the tools will uh, do for you. So we're going to try and uh, give you as much information uh, that you can uh, absorb. Take, yeah, <laughs> take back and uh, work with some of your own uh, projects right off the bat. So um, when on the opening screen, the first thing we often like to do is to customize our apps or uh, for how we want to use them. So across the top bar, that black top bar, you'll see a little tool that looks like a gear, and that of course is settings. And when you open up the settings, you'll see that there are some things you can turn on and off. Like you can uh, enable the iCloud and the uh, Dropbox so that the app will automatically sync with those. Where it says purchases, this is really nice because if maybe you had to uninstall the app and reinstall it, um, it will automatically then reload anything that you purchased. You know, that's very handy, Nancy, because how many times do, don't we have many disasters with our electronic equipment? Right. And if we've already had the app and we have to, again, reinstall it, it just brings it all back to everything that we've already got. So you haven't lost anything. Correct. It's a little scary, but you haven't lost it. Right. You can even change the measurement system, whether you prefer to work in uh, inches or in metric. You can tell the app which way you want to work. Uh, you can adjust the sound, because yes, there's sounds in this app. You can uh, t uh, tell it which are your favorite thread palettes that you want it to work in. There's some other information, like your user information. If you're using this on your uh, cell phone, uh, you can control the amount of uh, cellular data that it's using. And um, choose to download designs to store in the device, or just leave them all in the cloud. So you can uh, personalize this app to just how you like to use it. Because everybody likes something a little different. Yes. So this offers a variety. Yes. The other function that I think is really important, especially when it's a new app, is help. Oh yes, help is very important. And I'm telling you, everything I've learned and sharing with you, pretty much I learned using this help button. So across the top there's a little question mark. When you touch the question mark, then on the screen you're going to touch the icon or the symbol that you're, you need the help with. So in this example, after I touched the question mark, I wanted to know what that little info tab was for, so I touched the tab that says info, and a pop-up window occurred, and it tells me this is a design tag, and it gives some information about that. But occasionally, that little description maybe isn't enough. Right. So once again, on that same 
tag or pop-up window, there's a little button there that says learn more. When I click on learn more, it actually takes me onto the website and gives me more detailed information to learn how to use whatever function I'm trying to figure out. You, you know, Nancy, that part I find to be extremely valuable because as you say, we can't remember everything. And sometimes we work with so much different equipment, it's so nice to be able to have that written down so that you can, um, when you start to sew in the middle of the night and no one's available for a phone call, all of that information is on the website and this takes you there automatically. You don't have any stops in between. It's kind of an express. Right. And if you wanted to, at that point, you could even print out that information and make yourself a little reference guide. So don't forget to use the question mark if you're needing some guidance along the way. Now, once we've kind of got our settings and we know where our help tab is, now maybe we want to start exploring what's in our app. And once again, this is the screen that we see now is kind of the default screen. And on this screen, it allows me to navigate for designs by category. So on the left-hand side, you'll see all of these categories that are automatically there. And in each category, I can have a different packages. And how I can tell the difference of what's happening with those packages, in this case, where I selected the category cartoon, and on the top line you'll see that it, there's a little tag that says purchased. That means those are designs that I purchased from the app store. Well, that makes it easy. And are now available for me to use. Underneath that, you'll see where it says market designs. These are designs that I have not purchased yet. So this is how you're going to tell which ones you already have. And if you wanted to then purchase the market designs, you would just click on them and follow the instructions that come up on the app. Pretty simple. Well, there's a lot of designs in here. Did You, you didn't tell them how many designs they get. No, I didn't. So Mary, tell us how many designs. 500 designs are available on this, with this app. That's and 500. And this is what you're going to do. Do you see where it says market designs and it says free? So you just click on free and it'll automatically download those, those designs. So you do have to download all of those free designs, but you can do them by... Um, it's so fast. I mean, yes. you don't even realize it's happening. Yeah. But then once, once you've downloaded them, then they fall under the purchase, purchase category. Then you'll also see some other tags occasionally on this page. One says, we'll say, my designs. Anytime I've worked with a design in the app, it automatically saves it under this category called My Designs. So I always know those are my working ones. If I've done some editing, I haven't um, changed the original design. And in the beginning, this was a little confusing to me because I'm so accustomed to saving. You know, on your computer, mm -hmm. you want to save before you exit a screen. So I was a little nervous when I had to close one screen and I wanted to go to another. But with this app, it automatically puts your working files, or those you have been working with, into the My Design category. So they're always there. You can always go back and delete them, but again, that, again it's a little confusing for those of us who are, you know, have, have our brains trained to actually touch save. But I found it much easier. Oh, it's much easier. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then another category that you'll see will say Imported. And always in the imported categories, that's where I'm going to find designs that I have imported into AccuDesign from collections that I already own. Now, how would you go about doing that, Nancy? Well, I'm going to show you that in just a couple slides. All right. All right. But before we go there, just a couple other things I want to uh, show, uh, talk about. Um, right now, on the screen, we're seeing the navigation by category. And I can also navigate by packages, and to switch to that, I would touch in the upper left corner, there's a little icon, kind of looks like a suitcase to me. You would touch that, and that would switch me to the package page. But I'm not going to go there quite yet, because I want to show you how to search from the category page. When you're on the category page, all you have to do is, with your finger, slide the screen all the way to the bottom, and across the top you'll find these 
uh, bars that you can type into. So you could select the bar, your uh, keypad, your keyboard will um, pop up and you type in what you want to search for. And you can tell the app whether you want to search the design by the name, by the package, or the date, or even if you knew the author. So that's how you search. Make sure and just slide that um, screen all the way down. Then I want to show you how easy it is to understand what your thumbnail of the design is showing. I'd like to know what I'm looking at. Yes. So when you see the thumbnail of a design, at the top it will first give you, this says sign 02. So that's the name of the design, sign 02. Underneath that, there's the word sign. That's because it's in the sign package. Oh, all right. Okay. The little heart. It's starting to make more sense okay. now. The little heart is telling me that that particular design is saved in my app on the device. All right. Sometimes on the left you'll see there's a picture of a little box or a little cloud. If I see a box next to the word sign or a cloud next to to the sign, it's telling me that these designs are stored someplace else. So it's either in the drop box or in the cloud. Boy, is that going to make it easy? Because you know, you know how we are. We think we know where we put them, mm -hmm. but we really don't. Right. When right. you go back again, right. so that's going to make it again very easy to identify the places that you put things correctly. Then on the top, uh, on the right hand side, I see the number three with the little uh, rainbow circle. So it's telling me there are three colors in this design. On the bottom right, I'm seeing the number of stitches and then the size. Pretty simple. It, it's very clear. All the information in one spot. Now, after I've touched that little suitcase looking icon, it'll flip me to a different screen. And this is where I can navigate and look for my designs by the design package itself. This is kind of like a flip folder, isn't it? Yes, it is. So at the bottom, I can see all of my packages. So right here, I can see people, school time, sign, sports. And you see how there's a number under sign that says 32? That's telling me there's 32 designs in that package. You know, it took me a little while to figure out that those numbers were even there. And then I realized what it was telling me. So again, this is very clear. Once, once we understand what all of these different icons and the different symbols are, it really is going to make it a whole lot easy, easier to work with this app. Right. And then just by scrolling to the left or right on that bottom bar, I can view all of the packages that I have in my uh, app. And what I like about this is that they're actual visuals. You're actually looking at the picture mm -hmm. of the design. You don't have to worry about the labels or the name of it. You're, what you see is what you get. Right. Then to open up the package, you would just touch the package. So in this particular example, I had touched the sign package. And above it, it opened up like a little Rolodex. I love it because you just scroll through it and they flip over just like a Rolodex. And then you can see all of the designs in that package. Pretty easy. I love it. it again, it, it gets simpler as we go along. And again, as we've mentioned, we're doing this because we want to help you navigate to all these little nuances in here and make it easy and fun for you to use. Now, I decided I liked this little star design. But maybe I want some information. So in the upper right hand corner, that little tab that says info, when I touch info, this little window pops up. And it tells me more about the design. Yes. So at the bottom, I have some little tags. See those little tags? And if I touch details, then it's showing me right on the bottom the details of that design. So even like the category, the author, the date, all of that information. Now see, I'm just noticing that the date is down there. Sometimes, to me, that's the that's my that's why I remember mm -hmm. that I did it, you know, two months ago, right? Or I did it last week. So that's going to be very yes. helpful. Yes. Then you could get the package information if it's part of a whole package and tags, which are just easy ways to search. Maybe you put blue star or something to help you uh, recognize it. So you can change the name to something that's familiar to you. Yes. Oh, perfect. So. 
the, the question we're coming up with is how many total designs will the app hold? And it really depends on the size of your iPad, right? the capacity of that. Um, we know that the new iPad Air has a larger memory, so that's going to hold a little bit more. Um, and again, don't forget, we've got the cloud and we've got the Dropbox. So, I mean, it, it's not kind of the, the concern that we used to have um, with minimal space here. So there's a lot more options than before. Yes, and I think we'll discover as we go along that uh, we're really going to have almost unlimited um, possibilities with this. Okay, so now once I've found the design I want, um, well, before I do that, I'm sorry, before I do that, I want to talk about importing and exporting. That's a very important thing. I think a lot of people want to know exactly how you maneuver these designs from one place to mm -hmm. another, Nancy. Especially because we all have our libraries of embroidery designs and maybe want to get them in here. So from either one of those two screens that I just showed you, the uh, category or the package screen, you will find this icon with an arrow coming into the box and that always means import. And I can import all of the formats that are listed on the left hand side of the screen. So as I said earlier, this app is really available for anybody who, who owns an embroidery machine. Yes it is. Yes it is. And when I click import, if I am connected to the MemoryCraft 15,000 and everything is uh, on the same uh, wireless network, network mm -hmm. The machine will automatically show up in the top of the import bar. And if I have a design on my screen, I can just download that single design from my MemoryCraft 15,000. You know, Nancy, I'm getting very spoiled with these wireless things. I didn't think I would be so hooked on them. Again, it's kind of like heated seats in the cars here in Chicago in the wintertime. Yes. It's kind of like, I don't really need it, but boy, is it great to have. Right, right. But I know not everybody out there has a MemoryCraft 15,000, but you can use this app too. And so we have other places that you can import designs from. The, one of the simplest ways is to use Dropbox. Dropbox, if you don't know what it is, is a safe and secure storage system that you can install on your computer, on your iPad, and on your iPhone so that you can easily share files between these devices. And it's free. And it's so simple to use. To download this program on your computer, you're simply going to go to www.dropbox.com and follow the instructions and download to your computer. I want you to know even I was able to do this without calling anybody and finding out. It really just happens. You, you go there, you download it, and there it is. Right. Then from your, app or your iPad or your iPhone, you're going to go to the App Store, search and find the Dropbox app, and install it on your device. And that's going to hold innumerable designs. Yes. All right, so it's like another storage area. Yes, yes. You also, if, if your machine doesn't have wireless capabilities, you also can use these storage devices, AirStash, TP-Link, SmartBox, and the iUSB port. I'm going to talk about those in a, a few minutes to give you more information, but uh, I'll tell you, uh, Mary and me, we love Dropbox because it's so easy. It really is the simplest form. And you can have the Dropbox, and right here you're going to show us that this is your PC screen. So that you can see that the Dropbox appears on the screen. So it's, it's multi-purpose. Okay, it works with your PC. It works with the iPad. They see each other because of the magic of the cloud and all that stuff that I don't understand. <laughs> but it just happens. Yes. So that's where your sharing comes in. Yes. So what happens here, once... This screen is, like Mary said, on my computer, and I had uh, installed Dropbox. And when you're in my computer, 
on the left hand bar you'll see a little drop box and when I open it once the first time you've communicated with the um, iPad you'll get a little folder that says apps automatic you don't have to do a thing and in apps you'll get a folder that says artistic when I open up the artistic look what it automatically did it gave me all of the categories those look like the same categories mm -hmm. that are in the app. Right. So if I want to be really organized, I could put my designs in those categories. Or sometimes we're not too organized and you see at the bottom, I just dropped a Jeff and a PES design. Just dropped them in and I could still find them. It's kind of, kind of like your desktop, yes. right? Sometimes you put it in the folder and sometimes it doesn't quite make it in there. So the advantage from my computer is I could go into my libraries, find my designs, and copy and paste them into the Dropbox folders, and then I'll be able to import them into my app right from Dropbox. Yes, you know, see, that makes it a whole lot clearer. I think that now I understand better. This is how I'm going to get my designs that are already on my computer that I have installed. Mm -hmm. I happen to have a few, you know, mm -hmm. just a few embroidery mm -hmm. designs, mm -hmm. or a few hundred. I'm not quite sure. I haven't counted lately. But you put them in the Dropbox right from your computer screen, and then they become available when you go to your iPad. Pretty easy. Pretty simple. All right. Now I want to talk about these fun electronic gadgets. Because I know there's a lot of you out there love technology and love the gadgets. So these are going to be right up your uh, alley. Uh, the first one in the upper left is called the Air Stash. And it looks like a USB jump drive, which it kind of is. How it works is you can wirelessly send from the iPad your design to the Air Stash. And then I think there's a switch that you switch it over and then you put it in your machine and it sees it as a USB jump drive. That's pretty cool. That really is. It's kind of like one-stop shopping. Right. Now, if you've had any of these devices for a while, we're going to recommend that you make sure you go to their site and uh, do any updates that uh, make sure it's current. Uh, because w once again it's a new app they're using all the current things so make sure any device that you have is updated to the most current and the instructions on how to use these things are right there yes because as you can see there's so many things here and quite honestly man this is so out of my realm I mean this kind of kind of kind of makes me uh, shiver a little bit um, but there are some people who love this mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. so what this app does is allow for so many options for all varieties of people who like the high technology mm -hmm. or just kind of kind of low tech with a with a Dropbox kind of thing. Right, right. Another um, one of these gadgets is called the iUSB port and this is a wireless USB port. Wow. So you just put your existing USB jump drives into it and then you can wirelessly send to this USB port. So I don't have to plug that into anything? Apparently not. Oh, wow. Yes, it's all wireless. All right, so there's that. Then we have the TP-Link, which is a wireless router which has USB ports on it. Wow. And then the last thing is um, called the SmartBox, and it's from a company called Gigastone. And this is a uh, wireless receiver for an SD card. So you could send your design to the uh, smart box onto an SD card, put that SD card in your computer, and then transfer the embroidery designs to your USB. So these are just different ways to get the information. Um, There's certainly here. enough options here for everybody's taste. Yes, there is. I still love my Dropbox. I do love my Dropbox, too. <laughs> I, I guess so we're simple. very low-tech, Nancy. <laughs> That's right. And there's nothing wrong with nope. that. Uh -uh. So um, We're happy in our cave. Yes, we are. <laughs> so we're going to, I'm just going to go through the steps of importing. And it's going to be pretty much work the same way no matter what device you're doing. Okay. So the first thing I would do, of course, is touch my little import icon. And a window's going to pop up and tell me to choose my files. So I had navigated to my Dropbox in this case. And um, in my Dropbox, I had these 
DST format designs. Oh, it's not even a genome. No, they weren't. Ah. And I, you can just simply touch the designs that you want. And when you touch them, a little blue check mark is going to appear on the right hand side. Oh, I see your top one has the check mark on it. Right. So I don't have to choose all of them. I can be selective. And, and you know what I like about this? I even have on the left hand side, I can see that there's a little miniature picture of what those designs are. I love graphics. I do too. I don't read well. I would never remember what FL601 would be, <laughs> so I like that they show up. And yes, you can choose one or several designs. Then on the bottom, I would touch the button that's, or the word that says download. And then I get my next window which would be my save window. But before I hit save, I might want to organize myself. So the first thing... Yeah, some people do that, don't they? Right. The first thing it says is I'm, it gives me that imported design. So I probably do want to always store that there. But then I can also put it in a category. So I could uh, choose flower, which I probably would for this instant. And so I would, it would be saved two places imported designs and flowers. Isn't okay. that cool? Yes. Oh, very nice. And then I would just simply touch save and it would import all or whatever, however many designs I had selected. Perfect. Perfect. Now, another way to import is with my email. Because many of us purchase designs online and how do they come up th to us? Through email. Through email. And Accu design makes it so simple to access these designs. I opened my email on my iPad and in there I can see my attached design. When I touch the icon of my design, the little pop-up window appears and it gives me some choices. Oh, look what you have there. Open in AccuDesign. What could be easier? So you simply would touch the open in AccuDesign, you get that same save window as we had before and save it where you want to go. Wow. Just one little caution. Sometimes you'll get designs uh, e in email that have been zipped. You can't open a zipped file in um, your um, I iPad. So if they're zipped, you got to unzip them on your computer and then at that point I'd probably put them in the Dropbox. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I learned that because a couple of times I wasn't realizing that they were zipped files and I was wondering why they weren't going and again, because they were zipped. So, and they would, you would just handle that the way you would any zip file. Yes, yes. Okay, so now we talked about import, let's talk about export. It's going the other way, right? That's right, <laughs> okay. So once again, Whenever you see this little icon with the arrow going out of the box, that means we're going to send it out someplace. And if my MemoryCraft 15,000 is on and we're all on the same network, it will automatically show up in the top of the, the box. And if I was going to send this design over, I would touch that and then the uploading window appears and I would just follow the directions on the screen to send my design over to my MemoryCraft 15,000. And all you need is make sure that both your 15,000 and your iPad are on the same network. Yes. They're talk, so they're talking to each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't have a MemoryCraft 15,000. Well, that's too bad. I Mary. Can, I can sell you one. <laughs> you were telling me you have an MB4. I do have an MB4, which I use all the time. And so we want to get designs to another machine with a USB capability. So in that case, from this window where it says export to file, I would choose the format I want to send it in. Uh, there's a lot of choices there. So again, reminding people that it really doesn't matter what brand of machine you have. You can choose any one of those formats for the different brands and save it exactly the same way. Right. Now, one thing I would recommend, I recently bought a new printer and it's a wireless printer with air print capabilities. But those are fairly new printers and you may still have an older one. So I would recommend if you scroll from this um, export window, you need to scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see 
two little buttons, and one says Generate Info Design PDF. You probably will want to turn this on because what happens is you're going to need some information, color information or even a template of the design. Even the size. Right. And if you, uh, if you don't turn this on, you're going to kind of go back and do all this. If you turn it on, when you send your design um, to email, Dropbox, or whatever, you'll actually send the stitch file and the PDF file for that design. So they both have the same name, except one will be PDF and the other will be your, your stitch format. Yes, and then you'll be able to print that PDF file out and use it, the information any way you want. And you know, Nancy, I'm a graphic person. I like to see what I'm going to be mm -hmm. working on. I also like to see the actual size. To me, that's one of the most important parts about planning my embroidery. So this is great. And again, what you said, I missed this the first time around because when you were talking about the PDF, I didn't really see this on the screen. You really do have to scroll to the very bottom because it's kind of hidden underneath there. Right. You bit. won't see it unless you, you have to, on your screen, just scroll it up. It, it's just down a little bit. And then you have another choice. If you're sending multiple files, you, um, uh, you may want to zip them uh, so you can uh, turn on the, the add files to zip. And so it will automatically zip them up for it yes. okay, and compact them. Yes. Perfect. This is really very powerful, isn't it? Yes, it is. So here, Mary, I decided I would send you Nancy's puppy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I like Nancy's puppy. <laughs> so I would, you would select the format you want to send it in. So in this case, it was genomi.gif. So I selected that. And when I touch that, the next window pops up to convert. And on the convert window, I have three choices of exporting to. One of them, the easiest, I'm telling you, easiest way is email. Exactly. If I touch the mail button, that little window pops up immediately. The design is already in there. I just have to type in my email address, hit send, and it's going to my computer. That's perfect. That really is very, very simple. Then, once again, if you have that um, uh, a wireless printer with air print capabilities, you can touch print and it will automatically print out that PDF file. And again, we're, we're going to make sure people understand it's not a standard wireless. So your network at home that you, where you have wireless, um, that's not quite the up-to-date program that this um, likes. It likes the air print. Yes. So that has to yes. be specific. Yes. And then my last choice would be to export it. And so when you touch export, do you see it comes up. I can export it to my Dropbox. Here we are again, all the same files. Or to any of those devices, the AirStash, the iUSB port, or any of those. So you get to decide where it is you're going to send those, export those files to. And once again, on the screen, once, once you're there, you just follow what the screen keeps telling you to just do. And I, I think it sounds like a lot of information because we're showing it to um, our customers all at one time. But once you work with it, like anything, if you do it two or three times, it really becomes second nature. And those screens really, it, it, it's almost um, a no-brainer because it's, it'll say, there's only a couple things to push. Yes. All right. Yes. So That's what I love about apps. They really are very easy. They're very simplified. Yeah. So now once I've sent it over, um, and then you just put on your USB, put it in your machine, and so. But now what I want to do is talk about um, the icons once we've opened the design in the app. So we're going back to the work screen of the app. Right. Okay. So here, there's that star. And after I looked at the information, decided I wanted that star, but I maybe want to do some editing with it, I would simply touch the star, and it would take me to my editing page. And on here, I have some tools. So on the left-hand side, there's a little hand with a finger. There's like a stitch, a sewing machine, a thread palette, and a hoop. And these are the tools that I can work with. And right now, the hand is highlighted pink, so I'm in the object selection and editing area. And across the top, I can, of course, see the star. Are you doing laundry in here? No, I'm not, Mary. But across the top, 
There's this a clothesline there. There's a clothesline, and this is what I love about this app. On the clothesline are each of the objects that make up this design. Wow. So, since I have individual objects on my clothesline, I can actually edit individual objects, take them out. Oh, that's pretty cool. Copy, paste, whatever I wanted to do. So, I not only can change the size of the design, I can change the size of each, one of the objects. Each object, boy, yes. I get a very powerful tool. So, um, if right now there's only six pieces in this and I can see all of those objects, but a lot of embroidery designs have many, many, many objects. And if I wanted to see more, at the top, let's see my little pointer up here, do you see that little blue clothesline? If I put my finger on the clothesline, not on the pin, but on the clothesline, and swipe to the right or the left, I can move the clothesline to see all of my objects. Yes, the design that I use has a whole lot more than you do, so they'll see that yes. a little bit later Mary on. Mary will show you a little more detail about that. So, what I want to do though is kind of show you what each of these tools mean. Okay, so when the little hand is highlighted, that's our object and selection uh, and editing tool. So here, I had used my selection tool, selected one of the objects. And you see the little sizing nodes appeared, so I could change the size of just one object. And I like the fact that all the other objects are grayed out, mm -hmm. so I know which one that I have selected. And on the clothesline, the selected object has a blue, little blue frame on it, so I also know that's the one that I've chosen. So let me talk a little bit about each of these tools. So I kind of blew them up to make it easier to see. They're a little hard to see in a situation like this. Yes. So I like looking at them large. So we have the selection tools. Now the tool that is grayed out, that's the tool that's being used. So across the top we have a selection tool, rectangle select. When I use that tool, that just means I would click on the object and it's going to select that object. The lasso select, right now that one's grayed out, so when I took this screenshot, that was the tool that it selected, that allows you to like drag a little circle around several objects and group them all at the same time. Uh, those are pretty familiar mm -hmm. tools that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of programs have. Right. So Then there's kind of a new one, it's called brush select. When you touch that one, when you swipe your finger across several objects, it selects them. You know, I have forgotten about that because I'm so accustomed to what I know, mm -hmm. which is the rectangle and the lasso. I forget about that brush, but that is a very, very neat tool. Um, like you say, you just swipe it across. Mm -hmm. So this allows you to use the tool you like. Then underneath the tools, after you select your tool, you might want to choose a selection mode. So standard. With the standard mode, when you, you're going to touch an object, You'd select it, and then if you touch it again, it deselects it. So that's pretty easy. That's how we're used to doing it. Then we have Add. This is kind of nice if I wanted to work with multiple objects. I would just touch each of the objects that I want, and it selects all of them. So as you're touching them, it would just keep them selected. Correct. Remove. Maybe I had a whole bunch of them selected, and I, now I don't want so many. When I touch Remove, then each one I click will become deselected. Again, this sounds pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, maybe I want to select all. So you just click all and it'll select the whole design. Then I could resize maybe the whole design. Invert. This is going to be uh, really nice when you're doing editing of um, multiple objects at a time. Maybe I have three objects that I've worked with, but now I want to work with the other three objects. When I touch invert, it switches. Oh, now, you know what, that hit would have come in handy so many times in some of the other programs that I work in. Yes. Then, I don't know about you, Mary, but this is probably my favorite tool this right here. This is an amazing tool. It's called Remove Small Stitches. I know many of us in the past have done some editing of uh, designs uh, or uh, converted from different formats, and then when you stitch it out, you get these funny little places where it'll do tiny little stitches in a spot. And that's because sometimes in the conversion process, the computer has to add stitches because it doesn't really understand what's kind of going kind of on. Like wild hairs. They're just right. Wild. And they're not very big, but it's always just adds them. So 
once I've done any editing in this program or in this app, I can simply touch remove small stitches and it will automatically delete any stitch that's less than four tenths of an inch long. It just kind of cleans up everything. Yes. Uh, that is, is uh, whoever thought of that, it must have been a lady because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little vacuum, it's small. Up. That's right, it's really cool. And then the last thing on this page is on those objects, if I wanted to change the color, I simply can use my change color um, option. And Mary's going to show you how that happens later. So this is really cool. Now, when you've uh, selected an object and those little sizing nodes appear, they just work like any sizing nodes that you have. I can drag from the corners and it will resize it proportionately. I can go up or down with the vertical or sideways, change the width. If I want to change the resizing handles to rotate and slant handles, you're going to touch one of the pink nodes. See, I didn't know this in the beginning, and I was accidentally getting the, the rotating, and I didn't know how I was doing it. Okay, so, so to change back from resize to rotate, you're going to touch a pink node. That's, that's all there is to it. Then you've got your rotate handles, and then you have this little arrows that will skew it. So here's a sample where I skewed my design. And the one on the left, you see there's a pink dot right in the center? I do. So when I skewed it, it twisted it, but it stayed on the center point. Now, you can grab that center point and move it, like I did in the right-hand screen. Oh, that's, you're changing the pivot point. Right. So then when I skew it, you can get some really interesting looking shapes. For sure. Again. This is very, very nice editing tools, much more than I had suspected mm -hmm. when I first saw this as an app. Right. And even though I'm showing this on the full uh, star shape, I could do the same thing with just one single object. See, that's the advantage of this program, that you can work with the individual objects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On almost all of the windows, you'll see in the lower uh, right-hand corner, this little measuring tool, because sometimes you may, might want to measure the area you're working on. So you simply touch that measuring tool, a little tape measure will appear, and you can move it wherever you want and measure the area, whether it's the whole design or a part of a design. And then just tap that little icon again to put your tape measure away. Very neat and tidy. Yes. The next tool on uh, that was on the screen is the stitch editor. And you simply little touch that icon that looks like the stitches and a new toolbar will appear. Once again, I blew these up big and Mary's going to show you this a little more on how this works, but I just want to make sure you understand what these icons are. So at the bottom you'll see one that says move to stitch. If I tap the arrow going to the right, it moves the cursor forward through the design. If I tap the arrow on the left, it backs up the cursor. And you'll see a little pink crosshair, and that's kind of showing you where the needle is. The slide bar, I can push to the right or left, and it'll quickly move through the stitches. So you can move individually or really fast. Also on the stitch editor, you can add and remove stitches. So Mary is going to show you this. This is just a great way to be able to this um, is very exciting. edit your design. Yeah, we'll get to that in a few mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. We also can add a thread trim and a stop. You know, sometimes maybe you have a design and you want to turn it into an applique, so you need the machine to stop at a certain point. Exactly. Um, or maybe you want to split a, an, a design in a spot. So these are uh, the tools that are found on the stitch editor. And once again, we can actually change colors from this uh, screen too. The next tool is stitch simulation, and to find that you would touch the little sewing machine icon. Then you're going to simply touch the play button, and the cursor will move through the design. I find that I'm using this more often because I want to see how it's going to stitch. I want to make sure that my angles are right and my stitches are laying exactly where I want them. And I'd like to see the pattern being formed on here. So I, you didn't think you used that very much, but 
I'm finding it extremely handy mm -hmm. to analyze this dish before I use it. Yes. And then at the bottom of the screen, there's a little speed control. So you can turn this up to move through the design as uh, full speed, slower, what, whatever you want. And then, just because it's fun, at the bottom, <laughs> there's a button called Move Hoop. And if you turn on the sound of your iPad and you turn this on, it'll sound like the sewing machine. It'll show a foot and it'll look just like your sewing machine. It's just too trying. Yeah, you, you like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, I just have these moments. Exactly. exactly. Is that when you go to sleep by the soothing sound of the machine? Of running? course, <laughs> of course. So uh, that's the stitch simulation. Now, the next icon is a little thread palette. And when I turn this on, I can change fabric and thread colors. Because sometimes, Mary, I like to kind oh, of I see always the design like to see what I'm sewing. Closer to the fabric I'm going to be working on and the color. So you would simply touch the fabric selection. It opens up the window. It defaults to linen. So you could open up that window, choose the type of fabric, and even change that color to the color you're working on. I know that that's, that's something that I, I struggle with. I'm not a good color anal analyst. And to be able to see the design in the colors and the fabric that I'm working on really helps me decide the best selection for all of you know, mm -hmm. for the design I'm going to be using. And those textures. The textures make a big difference, you know. Yes, yes. So you can play with that. Then, also from this page, you can change the color palette. So when you touch the icon for the color palette, it's going to open up. Now it's going to default to the Janome brand thread, but perhaps you use another brand. You simply scroll down, find the brand that you want, and then it'll display the colors in that brand. I was extremely impressed with the number of thread brands mm -hmm. that are in this list. Mm -hmm. I'd be hard pressed to find something that wasn't in there because you know we're always picking up threads here and there. Yes. And you know, it's nice to have the brand in there so you have some idea of what color they're actually talking about when they're saying, you know, forest blue. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And then this I simply love. I'm telling you this app just makes my life so simple because I don't have to think. So Sometimes we have designs that's more than four or five colors. We, you know, how many times you have a design that's got 15, 18, 20 colors? And you're trying to remember because you cut your thread cabinet is all the way over in the other room. So once you've got your design ready to go, when you come to the color palette, you simply touch the icon that looks like the little envelope. It automatically opens up an email message with the shopping list. Type in your email, send it to yourself, print it out. You know, I hadn't actually done this, Nancy. This is very cool. Very cool. Because we have very good memories. Very short, though. Okay? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, it's just, it, this is just too cool. Now, the last tool is the hoop tools. So, when you select the hoop tools, it'll bring up the hoop, the, uh, the default hoop. Uh, in this case, it's the uh, Square, square 14, the right. Janome Square mm -hmm. 14. And it'll also show you the current brand and the current machine. So if I had a different machine or a different brand, I would simply touch on the drop down arrow. It'll display the brand of machine. So I'd choose my brand and then click on the drop down arrow and choose the machine in that brand. Oh, the different models come up in there. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. So it'll always give you the hoops for your machine. Perfect. Now, one thing to keep in mind, just like anything new, new machines come out all the time. So if you don't see your machine or brand in there, but wait, it will... Wait a few days? <laughs> wait a few days. Because you check the formats. It might still save in your format. So if it saves in the format, just leave it in the hoop it's in and send it uh, or export it and you'll be okay. But once again, you know how any apps that you have, I mean, um, Mary told me earlier she likes uh, Bejeweled. and uh, They're always <laughs> updating that. That's right. So you know how apps have updates all the time. So just wait for the, just wait for the updates. So you can choose the hoop that you want. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to steal Mary's thunder, but this is so important. I don't think we can hurt to say this two times. Occasionally, you're going to open a design and then maybe it doesn't quite fit in your hoop. Or maybe you want it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller than, than it is. So when you open it up, there is a button 
called Fit to Hoop. And when you touch that button, it will automatically resize and regenerate the stitches to fit in that hoop. I've never seen anything as slick as this. This is just amazing. Just yes. amazing. Yes. The only thing I do want to say is, you know, we still should maybe think about that 20% rule. Uh, it shouldn't really go more than 20% higher or lower than the original design. Because if I tried to take a design from that little free arm hoop, which is maybe only one and a half inches, and grow it all the way up to the uh, uh, GR yeah. hoop, yeah. which is 11 by 9, it's, I might not get the same details. It's going to work, but it's not going to look as nice. Right. So yeah. there's some logic involved. Right, in right. Chair. So um, uh, just, you know, play with it all you want. Have as much fun, but what I would always do is um, just uh, uh, make sure and do a test out to make sure it has all the detail here. All right, we have a question here, and it's, the question is, can you set a, a hoop size if it's not listed? Now, in this app, you cannot do that, all right, because uh, what they're showing you are the current hoops for the existing machines. Um, as far as... Um, going in and uh, choosing measurements on here, okay, and, and choosing a, a hoop size, or selecting and creating your own hoop, okay, right now, no, that is not possible. And again, this is an app. This is not a full computerized program. Okay. Right, and remember, like I said, the developers of the app, you know, like anything new, and with all uh, apps, uh, the developers, are aware of the hoops that are out there and they're working on it and um, there'll be updates and hoops will be added. They want this to be available for, for all machine embroidery owners. Yes, so you know, so just again, just wait a minute. minute. Yes, <laughs> wait a day. <laughs> but I will tell you, uh, I do know because I did do it, uh, there, um, there are a couple machines that are not listed on there. They use the PES format. I was able to convert. I didn't change them any, but when I sent them uh, to the USB and put them in those machines, they read them just fine. So, um, you know, if you're staying, if you know that uh, the, dimensions, size, the, the dimensions size, of the yes, hoop right. are similar, just, you know, send them. You, I just would be careful on resizing until your hoops are in there. Right, and that's where that measuring tape is going to come in handy. Yes. You're going to check your measurement, and again, like anything, logically, if, it, if it's smaller than the hoop, it's going to work. Yes, yes. So now we've We've talked about all these icons. I bet you want to see how this works now. As soon as we make our mouse work, we <laughs> we're going to get that. What I'm going to do is I am going to show you a couple of the actual app, um, operations of the tools that Nancy has just described. So again, we're going to go back to that main screen where we've chosen our designs. And one of the things that I wanted to put on on the first part of this discussion is, you know how you go looking for something and you think you know where it is and all of a sudden you get a different look to your screen? Well, that's what happened to me. I was looking for a particular file and I knew it was in the culture folder. And I pulled it up and this is all I had in culture and I was like, wait a minute, something happened here. Well, if you don't use that folder for a while, what happens is it kind of compresses. And but don't panic. If you go down to the very bottom of the screen, you're going to see a little um, a little tab there that says View More. So all they did was kind of squish together for a little bit. You, when you touch View More, there you go. You wow. got all of your designs right there. All right, and again, you can see that they're all numbered. Again, right now they all say culture, and they just have you know uh, progressive numbers on here. But as we talked about earlier, you can change the names of the designs, you know, to suit whatever um, you're going to remember. For the project that I'm going to show you here, we are going to use uh, this little uh, what I think is like a little chapel. It reminds me of a little country chapel on a country road. So that's what we're going to choose. And again, you can see all of the information that Nancy talked about um, much earlier. Was that just a short time ago? It was. All right. <laughs> Where it's going to tell you the size and tells you how many colors there are. I'll tell you, that's sometimes when I'm choosing a design, okay, depending on how much time I have, 
Okay, I'm going to choose it by how few colors they are. So that's very <laughs> handy. You know some of those last minute emergency sewing oh, yes. projects? All right, so here is my design. I just clicked on it and it automatically comes onto my work screen. And again, this is just showing you how you can use that measuring tape. And you also have that little right angle that's in pink that is telling you how large your design is. Now, at the top of my screen, you're going to see I also have a clothesline. The clothesline always appears up here. And you can see that my design is made up of a lot more um, objects than Nancy's. And as Nancy mentioned, in order to see all of the pieces, all I would have to do is click on the clothesline at the top here, and it would simply scroll along, and I would see those pieces here. All right, so we're going to move along. And what I wanted to, again, show you is when you're working on a computer, you know you have your mouse and you have your scroll wheel, and it's very easy to change the size of the, of the objects on your screen by using those tools. When you're working with the iPad, what you're going to do is you're going to pinch and drag your screen. So that's how I'm going to get the look of my screen to be large or small. If I want to see the hoops, see the design in the background within the hoop, if I want to get a little closer, or down here on the left side, you can see that I really enlarged that considerably because I wanted to get a look at the texture and the details of the grass around my little chapel here. All right, so again, we've talked about the resizing. When you choose a design, the resizing handles automatically come up on it. Now, Nancy had that pretty little star there. I decided that my chapel didn't look quite the way I wanted. It needed a little better roof line. So I decided to play architect. And I came and made the top of it a little bit taller. So the entire look of my chapel changed considerably. The nice part about this is that with this app, the stitches will automatically regenerate to maintain the proper density for the original design. Again, taking into account what Nancy said about the 20% rule, um, that's one of the reasons I might want to enlarge this, Nancy, so I can look at it close up mm -hmm. and see if there's any gaps or if I can see through the stitches. Yes. All right. Yes. But again, this is so cool because I can actually adjust the size in all directions on here. All right. Now, one of the things that I like about this app also is that I can either move my hoop or my design to put it exactly where I want it in the hoop. And again, you can see on the left-hand side, the hoop that I have chosen is highlighted with the little yellow highlights on here. And if I've chosen the hand, uh, I can move the design. If I've chosen the hoop, I can move the hoop. So either way, you can move that around. And sometimes, if you have a lot of things on there, it might be easier just to use the hoop so you don't just displace things that you have in a special place. But you notice the pink background on the one on the left-hand side, Nancy? Yes. What, why, why did it turn pink? It turned pink to give me a little alert that my design is outside the actual stitching area of the hoop that I oh, have selected. Oh, so it, it. it's really, okay, so it's, it's kind of like warning, warning, mm -hmm. be careful here. All right, so we're going to move on and we're going to talk a little bit about that fit to hoop icon. What I have done is I have taken my chapel and I started out in the square 14 hoop, which is the default hoop on this, um, on this page. And you can see the proportion that it looks like in the Skies 14 hoop. Then I went and I touched the square 23 hoop. And I touched the fit to hoop icon, which is way at the top. You'll see that the hoop displays here so I can see which hoop I've selected. And it happens so fast that you really have to watch okay, carefully, but it's called the Smart Stitch Engine. It automatically changes the size of the design. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> changes the size of the design 
to fit into the hoop that I am working on. Isn't that cool? And Mary, I was just <coughs> surprised how fast it could do it. it. I mean, it's just seconds, seconds. Well, as I said, I had to study what it was saying. That's where the smart stitch engine was. I had to do about three times before I actually saw what the words were. It also was going to show you the percentage that is being changed. But what's even more exciting is when I chose the GR hoop, look at what happened to that hoop when I touched the automatic fit to hoop. Do you see the way the hoop rotated? That's cool. I did not do that. It just happened all by itself. Because, again, this design is long and narrow, in order to have it fit proportionately, the hoop had to be changed. Wow. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty smart app, quite yes, honestly. Yep. I don't have to think. I, I know. Oh. <laughs> All right. Now, we talked about changing the color of things. And when you're working with the whole design up here, um, we have the thread palette. But what I found is when I am choosing some individual pieces within the design, do you see how I went to my clothesline? And I chose the roof because I decided I wanted to make a little more colorful roof. So I chose the tab that has the roof and I took the underlay with it because, you know, what you see on top is not, not the whole design. I mean, I've got uh, the whole stitches in a design. There's that underlay stitching. So I chose the two of them and you can see that they've got blue outlines. So you can see it's selected, but you can also tell on the screen here that I have selected it because you've got the sizing handles. But again, because those two blue ones are selected, none of the outside things around the chapel. And again, it may be hard to see on the screen here, but everything else is great. So I've just really chosen those areas. When I do this, the color of the, of the roof shows up on the bottom left-hand side of my screen. And I was trying to touch the palette to change the color, but what I realized, again, by kind of experimenting a little bit, is that when I've selected just individual parts and I click on the thread color in the lower left-hand corner, I get a small version of the entire thread palette. I can scroll through here and choose my color. So that's how I changed the color on the roof. Again, a little different, um, but again, you'll do it once and you'll remember, if it doesn't work, you're going to say, okay, so Mary, Mary said something different. So Mary, when you change just these individual colors, you're back at the original object selection screen, correct? Yes, I am. Yes, That's I the am. easiest way to change thread colors on individual objects. Right. Again, cool. and again, when the object is selected mm -hmm. on the clothesline, yes. you're going to see the color that is originally was in simply click on that spool to see your new set of spools. Easy. All right. So, you know how all these designs are so wonderful, Nancy? Mm -hmm. All right. I just, sometimes I just can't leave things alone. Oh, Mary. <laughs> I really want to make some changes. And again, when I looked at this, it kind of reminded me of a country little um, chapel. And I thought it needed a little more landscaping around it. So what I decided to do was, again, go to my clothesline. I went to the clothesline, and I found the green grass. All right, And see, like we were talking about with the previous one, uh, design, you see how that green spool is yes. right there? OK, so easy. It is very easy. Mm -hmm. So I selected the green grass. Everything else is grayed out. I moved it away from the chapel because I wanted you to see that I could choose just that individual mm -hmm. part. Over in the upper right-hand corner, way up here, you're going to see some tools. What I did was I enlarged them over here so that you can see them a little bit better. And what I have are the traditional duplicate and paste icons. So with my grass selected, I touched duplicate or copy. And then I went and I touched paste. So just like most of the designs we're accustomed to, the, um, 
the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read here too. You read that and tell me what they're saying here. Okay. Um, the duplicate comes in right on top of the original design. And what I did on this uh, screen right here is I dragged the duplicate down and I changed that color and I made it kind of like a metal gold in here so that you can um, see that there's a difference in here. So now I have a second set of, of grass and I thought I would be a little creative with that grass, Nancy. And I took it and I clicked, like you told me to a little bit ago, I clicked on one of the pink uh, sizing handles and I got my skewing options. So you can see that I skewed the grass, I kind of compressed it a little bit, made it smaller, and then I skewed it. It's kind of like a windy day. Yes. All right. How fun. Isn't that great? I mean, again, I get a whole different concept mm -hmm. of the same grass that I started out with. And so I wanted to put it behind my chapel. Well, it was the last design on the screen that I added. So it's very hard for it to be in back of the chapel if it's the last one, because that will come forward. So how do I change that? We're going to go back to the clothesline. And on this, because there's so many pieces, it was kind of hard to show you. But here's my grass. And I have moved it to the front of the line. It got a promotion. So Mary, how do I know where's the back of the line? Okay. Well, I would have to take my clothesline mm -hmm. and scoot it across just like that. Okay, just scoot it. And all of the pieces are going to move along. And this was at the end of the line when I started this. I simply took it and I dragged it all the way there and got it to the front of the line. So the first designs are on the left. That's correct. And they move to the right. So you scrolled all the way to the farthest right. Absolutely. To get the last one and moved all the way moved to it the left. All the way through. So it goes first. Yes. So it so the clothesline works just like we read from left to right. Exactly. Exactly. And this is how I would resequence things like I just did, because the resequence obviously is very important. Um, for, for getting their designs, you know, in the proper sequence to sew them out. All right. But again, Nancy, I wasn't happy with that. I wanted more. I always want, you want more. more. Okay. <laughs> what did you want to do next, Mary? Pardon me? What did you want to do next? Well, I wanted to take, and I didn't like the fact that the grass was, um, that the grass was all the same color. I, I, I like a little change in the coloring because I like the creativity and I like to see the different shades. And we've got so many green threads, yes, Nancy, yes. that we've got to use a few of them. Right, right. All right. So what I did was I used that tool that you talked about a few moments ago called the Stitch Editor. And the Stitch Editor offers me two new tools. One of them is this one at the bottom. All right, and I've enlarged it so we can see it a little bit better. And you touched on that just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. With this tool, we can move through the design and get, get our cursor to be at a spot um, so that we can see how the stitching goes. All right, so sometimes it's, you, know, you want to see where the stitches are going to go. In this case, I wanted to drag my cursor to a point where I can squeeze in, and you can see right here is where I squeezed it to. This, these pictures are kind of backwards. I started over here, and this is where my cursor is, and I use my backwards arrow, and I just scooted this all the way across until it got right here. So and you, you just followed that little pink X to know where, where your well, needle was, basically. Yeah, I did that by touching this arrow because sure. it just it went on the pet. That's okay. the stitch. So instead of going forward, I went back. And you can see that um, the top part of this is showing me my actual stitches, mm -hmm. but the bottom part is giving me a computer rendition. So that's telling me that the, um, the stitches are the ones that have already been sewn, and the computer is what's going to be sewn. All right, so I wanted to get to that point, and I did. I got to the point where these two join. Okay. All right. 
kind of like the cross in the river, you okay. know? All right. Now, and I want it to be there for a particular reason, because once I get my cursor or my crosshair at that point, I am going to go up and use one of the new tools called, okay, the trim, all right? This is the trimming, okay? Oh, sorry, okay. Um, this is the cutting and the stack. Now, out of those two tools, you see the little scissors on the app mm -hmm. there? Yes. I'm going to use those scissors. And I am just going to clip my thread just as though I had a pair of scissors in my hand. And what that does is it separates the top from the bottom. So now I have two sections of oh grass. Oh, my gosh. You've got two objects out of one. So you see up here how I did that? Okay. And actually, I did it a little bit more extensively, as you can see on the clothesline. <laughs> All right. I kind of got, got, got carried, carried away, away there. Okay. But the nice part about this is that I can change the way my grass looks. This is the original grass. And all I did was make it larger. How cool is Isn't that? Isn't that exciting? So, in other words, you don't have to be happy and content with the things that are that you see. You can make those alterations. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, well, as we talked about when we first started this, the purpose of this app is to be able to go in, put your own personal editing on this for existing designs. Because we have a lot of designs, and sometimes we like everything that's in there, but sometimes we only like some of the parts that are in there. Another thing that I could do, Nancy, is I could save this grass, all right, copy it to a new screen, mm -hmm. and save it because, you know, you need landscaping wherever that's, you go. That's true. So there's lots of places that don't have the proper landscaping, <laughs> and this would work amazingly well. Yes. So it could be saved. You as, could make it its own new little exactly, design. Exactly. Simply by making all the rest of that go away. Excellent. Okay. So again, I can be my own editor. All right. So let's see if we can get to the next screen here. Sometimes this gets stuck on me. There we go. All right. Now, one more thing that is available in that stitch editor is kind of the haywire stitches. As you mentioned with the cleanup stitches, Sometimes when you move things, you kind of get these wild stitches that didn't kind of split exactly the way you wanted them to. With these icons right here, again, you can see them on your left-hand toolbar. This is deleting a stitch. This is adding a stitch. Love how smart's that? You know, again, it's amazing all of the things that this program is capable of doing. Okay, the you can look up here and you can see that I found this one stitch is really kind of much too big mm -hmm. and it doesn't kind of fit with the rest. So I put my cursor right up here. And again, sometimes it takes a little maneuvering to make sure you're in the right place. And with something like this, if I took away a little too much grass, it's not that big of a deal. No one's going to miss a little, a little bit of grass here. All right, so as I put my finger on my iPad screen, all of a sudden, I was surprised to see automatically a magnifying glass came up, okay? The magnifying glass came up because so I can see, okay, I can see the, um, I can see exactly where my, my cursor is and I can enlarge it to get exactly where I want to be. So I keep touching this so it deletes, deletes, deletes until I get the stitches gone. Very cool. Isn't that amazing? Yes. All right. So now let's go and look what I've done, Nancy. Mary, where'd those flowers come from? Oh, I just, I, I kind of planted some seeds and they came up overnight. Or I got them from another folder. Because one of the advantages, as I said before, I can save my grass, mm -hmm. all right, and save it as a separate file. Or I can go get designs from someplace else and bring them into here. Because with the copy and paste, let's say, okay, now first of all, we got to talk about two things here. I'm working on this design and I see it. Um, I'm working with this app, you don't save things, all right? 
and it gets a little hard. To right, they go to that My Design folder. They go folder. to that My Design mm -hmm. folder. So you don't have to do anything. They just always end up in the My Design folder. So I can really close this and go to a new screen. Cool. So it's a little scary yeah. because I'm afraid <laughs> I'm going to lose it, but it's going to end up there. So I open a new screen getting these flowers from the, the flower uh, folder. I brought them onto a new screen and I did the exact same thing I did when I copied and pasted the grass. I have uh, copied my flowers and when I opened the screen with the chapel on it, I simply went to paste and all of a sudden those flowers are there. Now, the paste, it doesn't forget. All right, which took a little bit, this kind of surprised me because the paste just kind of always holds your last design. So what you're telling me is when I copied that uh, little tulip the other day, it's still on my clipboard? It's, unless you've replaced it with something else, it is still, when you touch paste, that tulip's going to appear on whatever screen you are okay. on. Okay, well that's kind so of if good you, to So if you don't want a tulip on your Model T Ford, okay, you've got to replace it Make with something Make sure and, and copy the new thing that you want in. Exactly. Okay, exactly. I understand So that. you can see that I put two fields of flowers amongst my grasses. All How right? pretty. It's, so again, a lot of creativity available. And with the 500 designs that are available with this, with this program, we really have endless possibilities. Yes. All right. Yes. I'm going to show one more time that this is the My Design folder we just talked about. So, and you see, Nancy worked on her star, and she had her favorite little puppy over there. You can see you've changed colors in here, Nancy. Yes, I did. Yes. We'll work on that another, for another time. Yes. Here. Okay. And that's where the designs you're currently working on are going to appear. The last thing I did with this is exactly what Nancy talked about earlier in the webinar. I took and I wanted to send that design from my iPad screen to my MemoryCraft 15000. So when I went to export it, you can see that my MemoryCraft is on the same wireless network as my iPad and it came up on my screen. So I simply clicked on the machine and then I went to upload. Now there's nothing in that page right there so again I, I kind of think I didn't do something right but when you hit upload then the design is going to come into this screen. Then you simply click on it and in just a few seconds you can see that it's uploading here All right, and then you get the little tab that says done. So automatically, the design is going to go over to my memory craft screen, and I'm going to be able to sew it. And if you weren't going to go to your memory craft 15,000, you would just simply touch Dropbox or one of those devices, wherever you want to export that design. Exactly, to. exactly. So it's very easy to store this, and it's very easy to send it wirelessly. And again, we have all those other technical devices mm -hmm. that I'll leave to the technical people that they can work with. But again, you've got options, and that's one of the things I think is most important about this. Well, we want to thank you for joining us. I think that uh, our goal here was to show you some of the new features in there. Um, Nancy went through all of the different symbols and helped you explain what they were, what they were for. Um, and hopefully that you got a little bit more information out of here than you have before you joined, okay? Oh, look, at somebody's asking if they're puppy. <laughs> you know what? That puppy is one of the built-in designs. Oh, you should have charged a yes, nickel, nickel yes. a, a, a design. All of the designs that we worked with in uh, this presentation are of one of the 500 that exactly. are in the app. Exactly. I think once you uh, download those free designs, you're going to be amazed at the fun things that are in there. Um, so, yes, the puppy is in there. He is a um, uh, single color, and I used... Uh, the change color and the um, uh, features uh, Mary showed us to uh, break that object apart and add colors into it. So it took me a little time, but it was kind of fun. And, and, and I, you know what's funny? I did the same thing, Nancy, <laughs> yeah. with mine. It's yeah. it's a very cute puppy. Yeah. So um, we could have held out for money on that. You yes. know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope that again you learned a few things and. 
We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, Nance. Goodbye. Thank you all for coming.